Most of us have been taught that blood sugar levels rise mainly due to sugar and carbohydrates. If you've ever heard the phrase, avoid sugar to keep your blood sugar stable, you might believe that foods like steak, burgers, or grilled chicken have little to no impact on glucose levels. But what if I told you that even one bite of red meat can have an effect on blood sugar, metabolism, and insulin response? Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Diacelon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. This might sound surprising, but the connection between protein, fat, and blood sugar is far more complex than we often assume. Many people believe that because red meat contains zero carbohydrates, it must have zero effect on glucose levels. However, the reality is that red meat influences blood sugar through several metabolic processes, including gluconeogenesis, the conversion of protein into glucose, insulin secretion, and the way fat affects insulin sensitivity. While red meat doesn't cause an immediate sharp spike like candy or bread, it can still play a role in long-term blood sugar management and metabolic health. If you're someone who is trying to lose weight, prevent diabetes, optimize athletic performance, or simply improve overall health, it's important to understand how your body responds to red meat. And here's the kicker. It's not just about what kind of meat you eat, but how much you eat, how often you eat it, what you eat it with, and even how it's cooked. These factors all influence how red meat affects your blood sugar and insulin levels. When most people think about insulin release, they automatically associate it with eating carbohydrates or sugar. After all, insulin is the hormone responsible for helping your body transport glucose, sugar, from your bloodstream into your cells so it can be used for energy. However, what many people don't realize is that insulin isn't just released in response to carbs. It's also stimulated by protein, including the protein found in red meat. So what actually happens when you eat red meat? Once your stomach begins digesting it, your body breaks it down into amino acids, which then enter your bloodstream. These amino acids are used for a variety of important functions, such as muscle repair, enzyme production, and immune support. However, in order for these amino acids to be absorbed into your cells and used efficiently, insulin is needed. This is where things get interesting. Not all proteins trigger the same level of insulin response. Research has shown that animal proteins, including red meat, tend to cause a significantly higher insulin release compared to plant-based proteins. In other words, if you eat a steak, your pancreas will release more insulin than if you had eaten the same amount of protein from tofu, lentils, or chickpeas. But why does this happen? Scientists believe that certain amino acids found in animal protein stimulate the pancreas to release insulin at a higher rate, specifically amino acids such as leucine, lysine, and arginine, which are found in abundance in red meat, have been shown to directly increase pancreatic insulin secretion. This means that even if you're on a low-carb or keto diet, eating a lot of red meat could still be stimulating insulin production in ways you might not expect. For people with healthy insulin sensitivity, this may not be a major issue. Your body simply releases the insulin needed to shuttle amino acids into your cells and everything stays in balance. However, for those who are already insulin resistant, this frequent stimulation of insulin can worsen the problem over time. Insulin resistance occurs when your cells stop responding properly to insulin, forcing your pancreas to produce more and more insulin just to keep blood sugar levels in check. Over time, this can lead to chronically high insulin levels, which is a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. Another fascinating piece of research suggests that when insulin is constantly elevated, your body may be more likely to store excess energy as fat, especially around the abdomen. This means that if you're eating large amounts of red meat without balancing your meals properly, you could unknowingly be contributing to fat gain and metabolic dysfunction even if you're technically following a low-carb diet. What's the takeaway here? The key isn't necessarily to avoid red meat altogether, but rather to be mindful of how much you eat and what you eat it with. Eating red meat in combination with fiber, healthy fats, and slow digesting carbohydrates can help moderate the insulin response, keeping your blood sugar levels stable and reducing the risk of long-term metabolic problems.
One of the most controversial aspects of red meat is its saturated fat content. While protein plays a direct role in insulin response, the fats in red meat also influence how well your body processes glucose and responds to insulin. Contrary to what many people believe, fat itself doesn't directly raise blood sugar, but it can impact insulin sensitivity, which in turn affects how efficiently your body can regulate blood sugar levels. The concern about saturated fat largely stems from its connection to insulin resistance. Studies have shown that diets high in saturated fat can reduce insulin sensitivity, meaning that over time, your cells become less responsive to insulin signals. This forces your pancreas to produce higher amounts of insulin, which can contribute to chronic high insulin levels, fat accumulation, and eventually diabetes. But how does this happen? The main reason is that saturated fat has been shown to disrupt insulin signaling pathways. When you consume large amounts of saturated fat, particularly from processed red meats like bacon, hot dogs, and deli meats, your muscle and liver cells can become overloaded with fat, making it harder for insulin to do its job properly. This is known as lipotoxicity, a condition where excess fat accumulates inside cells and interferes with their ability to absorb and utilize glucose. Interestingly, studies comparing different types of fats show that unsaturated fats, such as those found in nuts, avocados, and olive oil, have the opposite effect. They actually improve insulin sensitivity and help keep blood sugar levels stable. This suggests that while red meat itself isn't inherently bad, consuming too much saturated fat without balancing it with healthier fats and fiber can create long-term metabolic issues. It's also worth noting that not all saturated fats are equal. Grass-fed beef, for example, contains higher levels of beneficial fats like omega-3 fatty acids and conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, which have been shown to reduce inflammation and support metabolic health. On the other hand, conventionally raised, grain-fed beef tends to have higher levels of inflammatory omega-6 fats, which can contribute to chronic inflammation and worsen insulin resistance. So what's the best way to consume red meat without negatively impacting blood sugar? The answer lies in moderation and balance. Instead of eating large amounts of fatty, processed red meats, opt for lean cuts of grass-fed beef and pair them with fiber-rich vegetables, healthy fats, and whole grains to counteract potential negative effects on blood sugar and insulin response. Now that we've covered how red meat affects insulin and blood sugar, Let's talk about how to eat it in a way that minimizes any negative effects while maximizing health benefits. Many people assume that as long as they avoid carbs, red meat is a completely safe food that won't interfere with metabolism. However, as we've discussed, red meat can still influence insulin levels, fat metabolism, and overall blood sugar control, especially if eaten in excess or in combination with the wrong foods. The good news is that there are strategic ways to incorporate red meat into a balanced diet without disrupting blood sugar stability. The key to eating red meat healthily comes down to three major factors, quality, portion control, and food pairings. By making mindful choices in these areas, you can continue to enjoy red meat without negatively impacting your metabolic health. Let's break each of these down in more detail. Not all red meat is created equal. The quality of the meat you consume plays a huge role in how it affects your blood sugar and overall health. Conventional grain-fed beef, which is what most people find in grocery stores and fast food restaurants, is often high in inflammatory omega-6 fats and low in beneficial nutrients. This type of beef comes from cows that are fed a diet of corn and soy, which alters the fatty acid composition of the meat in a way that promotes inflammation and insulin resistance. On the other hand, Grass-fed and pasture-raised beef has been shown to be much healthier because it contains higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids and conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, both of which have been linked to improved insulin sensitivity and reduced inflammation. Studies suggest that grass-fed beef has up to five times more omega-3s than grain-fed beef, which can help counteract the negative effects of insulin resistance. Additionally, grass-fed meat is richer in antioxidants like vitamin E, and glutathione, which help reduce oxidative stress, a key factor in blood sugar dysregulation. Beyond grass-fed versus grain-fed, another critical factor is processed versus unprocessed red meat. Processed meats like bacon, sausage, deli meats, and hot dogs are loaded with preservatives 
nitrates, and sodium, all of which have been linked to an increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, and metabolic disorders. These meats not only increase inflammation, but also contribute to higher fasting insulin levels, making it harder for your body to regulate blood sugar over time. To minimize negative effects, always opt for fresh, unprocessed red meat instead of processed options. Look for grass-fed beef, organic lamb, pasture-raised bison, or venison, as these tend to have better nutrient profiles and lower inflammatory properties. If you do choose processed meats occasionally, make sure they are nitrate-free, preservative-free, and minimally processed. While red meat is an excellent source of high-quality protein, iron, B vitamins, and essential amino acids, consuming it in excessive amounts can negatively impact blood sugar. Many people assume that because red meat contains zero carbohydrates, they can eat unlimited amounts without consequences. However, as we've discussed, excess protein can lead to gluconeogenesis, where the body converts protein into glucose, potentially leading to higher blood sugar levels over time. Research suggests that eating too much protein in a single sitting can trigger an unnecessary insulin response, particularly for those who are already insulin resistant. While moderate protein intake is essential for muscle growth, tissue repair, and metabolic health, consuming excessive amounts of red meat daily, especially without balancing it with fiber and healthy fats, can contribute to blood sugar fluctuations, increased insulin demand, and fat storage. So how much red meat should you actually eat? A general rule of thumb is to stick to three to six ounces per meal, which is roughly the size of your palm. This provides enough protein to support muscle function and satiety without overloading your system with excess nitrogen, amino acids, or saturated fat. If you consume red meat multiple times per day, consider rotating it with other protein sources like wild-caught fish, pasture-raised poultry, eggs, and plant-based proteins to keep your diet balanced and avoid excessive insulin stimulation. To stabilize blood sugar when eating red meat, it's crucial to pair it with foods that help slow digestion and prevent insulin spikes. Avoid combining red meat with refined carbohydrates like white bread, fries, or sugary drinks, as these cause quick blood sugar increases. Instead, pair red meat with fiber-rich vegetables, especially leafy greens like spinach, kale, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. These vegetables not only provide fiber, but also contain antioxidants that help support overall metabolic health. Adding healthy fats such as avocado, olive oil, or nuts can also enhance insulin sensitivity and help regulate blood sugar. If you include carbohydrates, opt for slow digesting, low glycemic foods like quinoa, sweet potatoes, or legumes, which release energy gradually and prevent sharp glucose spikes. This balanced combination of protein, fiber, and healthy fats helps maintain stable blood sugar levels, reducing the risk of insulin resistance over time. Red meat can absolutely be part of a healthy, blood sugar-friendly diet, but only if consumed strategically. The key takeaways are to choose high-quality meat, control portions, and pair it with fiber-rich whole foods. Avoid processed meats, refined carbs, and excessive saturated fat intake, and you'll minimize the potential negative effects on insulin, blood sugar, and metabolic function. By following these principles, you can continue enjoying red meat while optimizing your long-term health and preventing metabolic diseases.